fitting. All right. Welcome back. We're here in the shop. We're working on the red lobster. We were working on that, but we ran into a snag if you saw the other video. Hey, look at the screen and make sure the mic's going. Is the mic going? Like Woo! Yeah. Okay. All right. We can eat all that, but... Woo! All right, guys. I'm about to do a magic trick here. <laughs> I'm about to turn a Speedmaster block into a coffee table with the turn of this ratchet. All right. All right. Before, <laughs> before, before... So, I looked at the fitting and I was like, hey, that's messed up. So we're like, okay, we're gonna put another one there. It's supposed to be like a dash 12 ORB, whatever thread size that is. Um, Every other small block forward in here is dash 12 ORB. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what the oil filter adapting uh, housing is. Normally you have a stub coming out for your oil filter screw on, so you just take that out and then you put a ORB fitting in there and then that's for like if you're going to uh, be using a uh, external feed going into the block. Well. Everything else, all our other small block forward, and I knew that it was a 12 RB. Uh, this one is not. So it's some China. Well, I don't know if it's not. It's definitely not. It's not, because this doesn't fit when you thread it. Yeah. So now we're, I'm gonna cram it in there. Yeah. It it starts like one thread, maybe one thread. Now two. Two two threads, and then it just stops. So we. It's supposed to be ORB. Uh, or, no, hold on, hold on. Was, was it even machined for the O-ring to... I mean, it's just a flat surface. Yeah, see, it should be machined for the O-ring to seal in there. Like it should have a receiver groove? Yeah, receiver. Yeah, like... I mean, I have a... Like a dart block right here. You guys can see, like, there's a chamfer, and the O-ring sets in that chamfer. Um, so, I don't know. I try to call it Speedmaster, but <clears throat> I don't speak Chinese. They don't answer either. Yeah. Um... All right, so at any point in time, can this, like, hurt the block? Yeah, no, I mean, at, at any point in time, yeah, if the fitting breaks off or... Yeah, see, okay. that's... Done. Yeah, no. See, and I don't think that's even, like... If you guys know, like, a pipe thread is tapered. That's how it seals. Th this ain't... This ain't sealing. Let me try to put a little bit more ass on it. No. Maybe it's got, like, a burr or something. Nope. That's <laughs> burr. All right, take it back out. Oh, we're not just gonna run that? Run it home. Oh no. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. It's gotten tight in there. I don't know how many threads you're gonna have left here, my guy. Yeah, see, that's not even screwed in there, like... That was two threads. Yeah, that's not enough to seal. All right. Um, Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so... Just destroyed the fitting. Yeah. That's aluminum on, on aluminum crime right there. <sighs> oh, here, let me get my flashlight i got a i got a new night core uh edc 27 it's pretty badass let's see let me turn it on here and get it unlocked you know a bunch of little brightness setting that's like the lowest one that's got turbo all right so my hands in the way this is here, let me, let me see the light. yeah here you see the light and then i'll, I'll do the telescopic the first two threading threads have to be absolutely smooth. Come on. Come on, baby. You can do it. There we go. I gotta zoom in nice and slow. Stay smart. Alright. So, that's our dilemma currently and that is a pretty large dilemma because, man, they just didn't even like... I don't know what thread that is, but that's not... I can tell by the thread pitch it's too close for... And? Yeah. Some like... Metric. Oh, shit. It's, you didn't know they were doing that out of them. Let's get it maybe it. Woo! I think badass. Look how bright this is. Oh! <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think I have that left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, I'll, I'll, I mean, is. See, this thing, it's got a screen on it for a flashlight. Yeah, it shows you like battery life and how long, like. So it's like at that level. You're at like uh, 32 hours and 56 minutes, and then 65 like lumens, seven hours. Yeah, where do you get that? Internet. How three much hours. Give me a price tag on that. 
Um, I got the pre-sale, like the first one, it was like 80 bucks. Oh really? I thought yeah. I was about to say something absolutely obnoxious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I paid four hundred dollars. No, no, no. If you know Matt, you know that he would pay four hundred dollars for a badass. Hey, I got. Yeah. I like. I like my shit. Oh yeah, I got my PVS fourteen night vision. I got my Nox eighteen thermal. Uh, I got a badass Garmin Tactics Delta with applied ballistics. And uh, let's see what else am I looking for. You can tell for. when he gets paid. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, I am looking for an IR illuminator. So if any of you guys are in the military and have like a PIC 15 full power and it gets lost, hey, Matt, let me know. Look at my boy up here about to mount tires. Hey. Dave's about to have his first right, here. Let, let's, let's go over here and look at this. I'm a big Amazon hey, shopper. Dude. I love the Chinese parts. There's nothing wrong with them at all. <laughs> yeah, except for the blocks. Except for the blocks, yeah. Uh, Check out these. Now, these, this is a, a MJS Streetcar Mason Smith special recommendation. So if you guys see in like a month or two when our, all our trucks are going out there blowing out tires, it's Mason's fault. Whoa, 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 whoa. I recommend a hand cook and he buys Chinese tires. Hundred and eighty dollars a rip. Look at him, look at him. That's multiplying. Mud claw. Extreme empty. I mean, it's, it's got opening countries on it. Those are good tires. They're yeah, those, yeah. Off. This is load rating E. What load rating is that? This, e is plenty for this thing. Oh, yeah. We're going to learn David how to use the tire machine today. E. 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 All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, get the soles all out. God, if that don't want to make you just buy a pack of Red Man and spit on the floor of this truck, I don't know what does. <laughs> Yeah, this tire Dude, is, it, it's gonna it rub is, like no. when you put the plow on it, it's gonna yeah, rub plow, not, not, so bad. All right, it rubs yeah. all these are plow trucks. The the gold truck rubs with the plow on it with the hand cooks it's got on it. Like the highway the tires. tires. Yeah, the, the, the same I'm I'm gonna say it right now. This right here. The back? The back should be alright because it's not that wide. These tires with a leveling kit clear great. And off road with them, whatever, they don't rub. What about just turning the keys up? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. My leveling kit, I meant crank the keys, make them ride like gas. Dude, I, someone wearing a hat like that you're wearing would definitely recommend these tires. Bro, I'm winning a GTR. All right, let's make this handshake right now. If you win the GTR, David will suck your toes. Woo -hoo! Lock in. I'll take that. There's no downside. <laughs> Wait, no, no, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. But if you don't win the Dave, you have, you have you to suck your toes. No, 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 that's way too big. Please explain yourself. That's, 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 Look at him, he doesn't even know what to say. That's, that's, no, Matt said it, that's way too big. Yes, sir. What messes me up is this has been, you know, in my bay for, what, nine months now that I've been here? Um, I've, I've never noticed that. He's like, damn, if I noticed that, I, I, got, way, I got way less work done. Oh. All right, came back over here. I didn't want to, it was really loud. They're uh, changing the tires. Um, so, I've tried to do some measuring. It's like not the correct thread on the block and uh getting a tap it's like a inch and a sixteenth 12 sae thread but I, I took a thread gauge and it's not i don't know what it is it's not metric i it's probably just some it's probably supposed to be that but they probably just had really bad tooling um so and th there's no really chamfer for the o-ring set in there so if you guys know like an orb fitting the uh, o-ring boss or um port fitting you know there's a lot of different names for it but the o-ring fits inside the chamfer and whenever it's tightened down it seals against the chamfer and the fitting and everything just kind of seals together if that chamfer is not correct or there is no chamfer then the o-ring just kind of butts up against the block and it's not designed it, it just <clears throat> it can blow out not good so our only option and i do not like this but it's really our only option is to uh tap it uh mpt half inch um and then cram a fitting in there never touch it again uh so i got a steel fitting so that way you know steel fitting going aluminum is a little bit more resilient to the threats coming off of it and uh put a bunch of pipe dope on it if that doesn't work if like we're just completely screwed every which way i'll take a uh, dash 10 orb fitting and set it in the block and then weld it to the block and then it'll be permanent external um 
pump. So it's kind of what you get when you buy Chinese stuff sometimes. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's maybe good, sometimes it's maybe shit. We're getting into issues right now that the tooling issues, you know, I, I think that I think that <clears throat> there's anybody's capable of making and producing anything. Just because it comes from China doesn't mean that is a bad product. Uh, there's a lot of things that come from China that are great products, but it's just like here, like in America, you could have somebody make something, and it could be America! complete America. It could be complete junk because they're the ones that made it and their manufacturing process and their tooling and everything. Luckily, you know, we do have really good quality control. We use good materials. We use good tooling. All those things come into play whenever you're manufacturing something, and you know, them they're just kind of like just making the stuff and ramming it out and might be good might not kind of rolling the dice so i'm gonna try to tap this hopefully like the tap doesn't do some like luckily these large taps they usually don't break off this is some china tap it comes from china john is like he's he's been on an amazon kick and he's dangerous like he it, some stuff's okay but he just like with no care in the world's like yep order it Yep, so I'll let you guys know. I'll give you an update after I tap it. A few moments later. The pipe tap won't work. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! It's too, like, the, the threads, you know, it, it, you know, like, changing your threads with the tap is not an ideal situation, and they're, it's just not going to work out good. So, um, talk to Speedmaster, and they were like, well... Haven't really heard of that problem. Don't know, try tapping it. Let us know so we can pass it on. So, um, talk to Kevin. He has a, a 1 and 16th dash 12 tap, which is the correct port fitting thread size. So, uh, we're gonna send somebody up TKM. He set it outside, we're gonna pick it up, and then maybe tonight we'll tap it and everything. Um, hopefully we can get it in there and just not not an ideal situation a um, little bit of a delay unfortunately so we're gonna work on that and uh, I'm gonna pull the oil pan off we're gonna have to uh, so it, it had a dry sump had all these lines and everything just wasn't really it had a lot of shit going on we need to fix so we convert it to where we're just gonna run a single external wet sump and I got a fuel pump drive on here but it's hitting the pan because the pan has a kick out and it's designed for windage but it, it would probably make more power with that kick out, but the pump doesn't fit, so we're going to have to cut that out. So we're going to pull the pan off. I'm going to add the heater. I'm going to weld the bung in for the turbo drain over here, <clears throat> and then we're going to section that area out and uh, recess it in so the pump can kind of like sit inside the pan. Very similar to how MK Ultra is. Um, I did the same thing as Mickey's Fab Pan. Like, I order all the pans now without the windage kick out because that way you can get the pump uh, nice and close to the block because otherwise you end up running into, uh, like we're running into clearances with our uh, header and our fuel pump here and our fitting. And <clears throat> this AVA pump is really an LS design. Um, they make a bunch of different pump bodies. Uh, like they have one that's a vertical and one that shoots out that way. Uh, this one coming out this way toward the header is not ideal, but if we move the pump, you know, to here and then rotate it up a little bit then we can do a port fitting from uh, brown and miller that goes straight in there and then 90 um, and that's going to go over to our clear view clear view to the motor and then come out of here mount the fuel filter system one right here it goes into that comes out of that goes into the rail bam go to the racetrack so uh what's john doing he's talking yeah highly productive right now we got the storm trucks going so we're gonna get that. Um, so now you'll probably see us working on the oil pan now. Here we go, got the pan off. Do some surgery on it. Uh, my plan is to cut it. So you can kind of see this is like a kick out. So like the windage, like the woo, spinning around in there and shit's flying around and we're gonna cut it here and then go vertical down. So it's gonna be like a shoop straight down and that'll give us uh that doesn't seem like much you're like man that's you know a whole lot of work for an inch but sometimes an inch makes a big difference <laughs> <laughs> i'm on my diet uh diet what, what do you got there i'm 
going to eat one cup of rice and one cup of ground lean turkey. Yeah. Shout out to Bryce, the LS Nasty bodyguard for getting me on this. And now all these guys, they're just forced to be on it because they eat what I eat. That's not one close. That was one. I love you, turkey. The lunch was good. Like the the steak, the steak cut was not great, yeah, but the the that. the seasoning and the potatoes, like, come on, it, lunch... the potatoes were smacking. Yeah, come on, P throw some fucking respect on my name. All right, no, no, it was, the flavor was there, but like my jaw was tired. Yeah, the it steak. Was no, it was no, it was no Southern Vine Steakhouse, that's for sure. Yeah, no, the steak was not ideal. So, um. Yeah, we're just going over all our... Small walk forwards are stupid. You have to use RTV on the oil pan gasket. You have to put some of the oil pan bolts in through the oil pan, which is stupid as well. Oh, we got to get those two that are out, that are stuck in here. Yeah, well, yeah, all that's coming. We, we're going to pull this Wendy's tray out anyway. Cause uh, we, be, I, I better not lose them. Yeah, no. They're, well, we're going to be changing it out for whatever. So, all right. Well, I'm going to start cutting on this. Maybe We'll get a time lapse going of Matt packing this stuff off. Yeah, and maybe find some material. I got some quarter inch what welder are we going to use oh we got uh we got the we got travis's welder. hp yeah so that should we're going to try that guy out because our miller here is still broken uh, i'm gonna start uh doing some layout on this figure out what material we have we might be doing some like hammering some intercooler pipe out for some sheet metal i don't know don't want to do that but you gotta do what you gotta do all right i'm gonna start cutting see you guys in a minute All right, so um, you guys saw, I just cut it apart. I got the uh, porta band blade uh, stuck for a second. I had to cut, do some relief cuts. Um, so any kind of like time you cut metal, uh, sometimes like whenever it's, like if it's pulled together and then welded and everything um, flexes and draws and the material can get to where whenever you start to cut relief cuts in it, just suck together and that's what happened. So um, I got it cut. <clears throat> and uh, this is gonna be a pretty, substantial increase um, I, I really tried to um, go as close to this as I can so I kind of taper cut it right here just because we're trying to get you know if we're gonna cut this we're gonna try to get the maximum amount of uh, material um, to use and then if you notice too I cut along the weld and I left some of the weld because in my opinion I think it's easier to weld to an existing weld than to weld to um, sheet metal a little bit more material and everything so i'm gonna come in here um clean this edge up make it nice and uh flat to where uh when we put a piece of material over here it's gonna you know be a nice square box and then we have this to box in so um yep not uh not gonna be too bad we got some of the <clears throat> some of the other stuff i guess i could have Trying to think how this was whenever I cut it. No, I guess I couldn't. I was thinking that it was already boxed in like that. So what we can do is we can that would actually fit. But anyway, we'll just cut some more material out. So I'm gonna get our uh, flap disc using all the stuff from uh, Walmart Supply. Awesome guys. Use our uh, code LS Nasty ten for uh, what was it? LS Nasty for five percent off at Real Art Supply. They got some. A uh, real badass aluminum uh, flap disc, so we're gonna grab one of those bad boys and we're gonna clean oh, all this up. Cameron Johnson race cars website. Oh, Cameron Johnson. John Doc five off will get you five off. Who knew? Yeah, like that. So, 
All right, sounds good. All right, well, I'm gonna get back to grinding. All right, I got um, everything deburred. Uh, I went to make sure I filed all my edges and everything. So you don't want to like have any kind of trash or anything that's gonna after you weld it could end up getting sucked up in the weld or could fall down in the pan. So um, everything feels pretty good now. I have some plate here, <clears throat> and this is a little bit thicker than I want to use because like you know it can be like. It's just, it's just a pan it doesn't need to be super beefy so if i put a thick plate on here then that's going to reduce um the amount of clearance i have so i'm doing all this to try to gain as much amount of clearance so i probably want to use a thin material like what is on the pan before so um this is where we'll come over here to our sheet metal what was that one was? oh boy oh boy this, this might be us right here if it's wide enough. Oh boy, it's gonna be wide enough. Look at that. Man, I don't even... I don't even need to cut it. Hmm. So, I'll uh... Clean all that up. Slap that bad boy on there, get the welder set up there, and uh, start doing that. So we gotta do this. And then we also are going to add a uh, oil um, heater in here. Uh, these, the Steph ones, I think are the best. There's a part number. They have like some 200 watt ones. Like I want my shit in there cooking. So this is a 500 watt. Um, I think they make even one that's like 750, but 500 watt ones do pretty good. Comes with the weld bung and everything. Put that bad boy in there. Get her going. Um, Got our Peterson. Uh, this is our dry sump. It's going to go right here, so it'll be a uh, ORB to a 12, and then that'll go on there. And it's got a filter in here because you always want your scavenge um, to have a uh, filter. Some of the pans have the screen in here uh, that will help with the uh, scavenge um, filter, but this one doesn't. This is just a straight pickup. I kind of prefer this over the other ones because I've seen some pans that have the scavenge screen built into the pickup. Problem is, if you ever really junk the motor and a bunch of shit gets sucked up in there, there's really no way to clean that out. So you're like blowing it out with air and brake clean for hours trying to get all the shit out of there. This, it might let something through, but I can clean this a lot easier than I can clean in there. And you can check this every single time you change the oil. So got that, and then uh, again our turbo drain, which is gonna be over here. So um, get all that cut in there, and then after that, we're gonna wash this thing out really, really good, make sure we ain't got no trash or anything. So I'm gonna work on cutting this out and uh, fitting this, and then, we will uh, be welding it up. So just weld a little bit, um, probably some settings I could change, maybe go up on the frequency on um, the welder. Um, certain welders, like my Everlast is like 105, 115, somewhere in there, welds pretty good. Um, this is a little bit higher, I think I have it set at 120. Um, AC balance could probably be played with a little bit. There's always, you know, I've got a lot of dials and everything. 
just kind of everything's different there's no like really there there is wrong ways but um everybody's got a little bit different welding style uh, it's, it's not too bad it um it welded pretty good the uh you can see like i mean that that's a pretty thin um piece of sheet metal and uh there, there's a gap and you're welding on the edge so to be able to weld that um you know this welder is pretty good i mean that, that's a really good test because it's uh you got a lot of stuff working against you it's not like a a, a t-join or something where you got a lot of back or a thick plate or anything you know you got basically a, a 90 degree butt weld and uh it, it's two dissimilar metals you know i don't know what kind of material that the pan's made out of i'm assuming it's 50 52 formable um i don't know what this sheet is like so there's there's a lot of stuff going on but um so far thing is kicking the shit out of the miller Just load it up. A little, little shaky. Uh, I don't know. It's like breathing's a little difficult. Um, get winded pretty easy. So like when I'm welding, I'm like usually hold my breath sometimes. And then I'm like, oh shit, I can't breathe. So, but uh, got it welded up, clearance, everything's good. We got a, a lot more room for activities right there. Uh, they're over there working. What you guys working on? Build them. Build them. Oh yeah, don't you have to weld a header up? Oh, you didn't put that on there before welding it, did you? I forgot about it. Oh, David's taking it off right now. I just, I literally just RTV'd it. I'm leaving. We got two bolts tight. Thank God you said something now. Dude, this sucks. Hair got cracked whenever we're uh, hammering on it, and uh, I noticed when I was heating it up, I was like, "Yeah, I think we, we need really just read the two, but they're gonna weld it up." It's just like, no, it's not a good ideal scenario. Like when you change stuff, like what happened was the port height um, changed on the head, so everything got shifted up, and when it did that, it, you know, got into the headers on the frame rails. So that's how it goes sometimes, but. That's clearance. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the HP. I've welded with them before. Um, the the arc, the arc at start um, compared to uh, my Everlast and some other welders. I don't think the arc start is as clean, um, and I do not like the torch. That that's like a. Those are those are good torches for when they're needed, but just for like general welding, uh, good you know CK like WP17 hard to beat flex head uh but those are kind of like not they're, they're always at a weird angle for me um and especially my hand like i don't have a whole lot of dexterity because my skeleton hand um so th those torches make it a, extremely difficult for me um so now we're going to put the uh bung in for the drain and the bung in for the uh oil heater which is probably going to go over here on this side, maybe on the other side, we're uh, gonna shoot for in the middle of these baffles right here, so like nothing gets hung up or hanging or anything, and maybe up, maybe like right here because like as this it goes to the rear, I don't want it to hit the um, oil drain and like have to shoot over, do some weird stuff. So we might go like right here um, and. Uh, Put it up a little bit higher uh we just want to also make sure that we got enough we, it is below our windage tray so there's a little bit to to think about whenever you're doing um installing this stuff because you can't just ram it in anywhere because and it's like oh it doesn't fit i wasn't going to show this part to be honest oh 
Oh, we can over here. All right, so. what are you gonna do? Say I'm a hack? What are they gonna tell me I don't work on things? Well, how do you think this got done? So, uh... <clears throat> we're gonna heat this up, and as we heat it up, you guys probably see the crack. Um, it, 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 it didn't it, fit. It's probably not, yeah, it didn't fit. It hit the frame, and part of the K-member, and like the ultimate fix would be the cut the K-member, <laughs> move the bar, cut this, move this, do all that, but, um, hammer. Yeah. So I'm gonna heat this up, and you, as I heat it up, you hey, guys come, come around here and view from this angle, you'll see. It's gonna have to get hot, though. Tyler, touch it and tell us if it's hot. Okay, well, not that bright. Turn it down a little bit. Maybe go from the inside with it? On the bright <clears> side? <throat> well, hold on, hold on. I see what you're looking at, but I don't think that's it. What if you stuck the torch in there like David said and blew it out? Let's just look. <laughs> What's it look like down there? That guy there? Mm. God, if we took it off and there's no crack. Mm. It only took like two seconds to get it off. I don't know. I, I, I'm almost positive that I saw a crack before. I'd piss me if I drop this in there. It just gets melted. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't see one though. Can I feel like you would see it. A little smoke in there. A little do a smoke test. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh yeah, they they got it. Yeah, if we could pressurize the... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So let's just say hypothetically there is a crack in it. How will we know when it's on the car? No, I mean, it'd probably have an exhaust leak. Because you got to think... <clears throat> the Would it blow it open, you well, think? Yeah, because, I mean, the, the, the on, during a run, the drive pressure, it, it, it's going to be cherry red, the whole entire thing, and you're going to have 50 pounds of pressure in there. So if there is a crack, then it will... Show. I mean, it could have just been where it was being hammered and there was like a some point. material laid over, but it, it looked like a crack before because... Let's get it hot one more time and just look at the whole thing. We're going to start from the top. Scratch over there. Crack so far. 
where that's it on the inside right there. Well, where did he on it? I mean, I don't see it. I mean, I don't see it now before, but I saw it before. I mean, I thought I saw it before whenever we were... What was a piece of Ava's hair? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that shit is... Yeah. That shit's like uh, Astro Light or whatever. The... No, it's not... Is it hot down here? No? 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 I'm not... No. You're on your own. Warmer? More uncomfortable? Okay, I'm done. I guess just throw it on there. Tyler's like, yeah. Yeah, you're on your own. How much money to just grip it? How much? I, uh, at least, uh, God be third degree on my hand, I'd say at least 250000 No, God, not even. I'd do it for a million bucks. I'll do it for a lot less because I can't feel nothing in my hand. No. So. <laughs> I, I thought I, oh, I, I think I did cook it a little bit right there earlier when I was welding. So I, I'm just going to rinse this underwater quick before we put it on the car. It's ice cold water. Yeah. Mason, yep. come poke this for me real yep. quick. All right, all short intermission there. Had to make a little sheets run. I'm on the race tech diet, so I wasn't able to get anything good. But all the boys are fed, which means work's getting done. Red lobster's coming together. While Matt was over there cutting and grinding on the oil pan, we got the header all sealed up, the turbo kit on and all sealed up, ran some vacuum lines. Then Matt brought the oil pan over, crammed it on, literally with a hammer. Yeah, hammered it on. Um, did our turbo drain line? We modified it. Look at that. The perfect length that we made. How long ago? Six months ago. Yeah. So we cut the fitting off, pulled it out. It turned out to be the exact length that it needed to be. So um, now we're gonna see. Like <clears throat> you guys noticed, we have a uh, substantial more room like before this was coming out to here so now our old pump fuel pump combo careful i don't know how far it, or how tight that old fuel it's pump not. is in there now this could go Woo! look at that all the room wow that's substantial right, for how maybe. much more clears. before it was like right it, here. yeah yeah so just just that alone um gets us to where we're a little bit lower on our motor plate so <clears throat> the problem is build them right build them right you have to do a bunch of bullshit so what we're gonna run into is if you guys i don't know if you see on camera but this motor plate isn't really straight um it's bowed out this way um like they welded a doubler on here which is kind of weird i've never seen that um but it needs to be like half this thickness so uh literally without the doublers bolted up it would fit perfect Pro probably close you know you know put a washer in there do something but and this one's kind of odd because it does have like an engine limiter on there we don't really run engine limiters yeah use a transmission solid transmission mount i mean you can run engine limiters but if you have a solid transmission mount i've never had to run a limiter um but the problem is, is whenever this isn't square with the motor like anything you mount to it is also going to not be square so when you put the fuel pump and oil pump up here this is going to be rotated in so our alignment's going to be off a little bit and that's what and, and th that's one of the reasons why we're changing a lot it had the fuel pump mounted separately from the oil pump i don't really like to do that um but everything that was mounted it was just like it's bullshit like it's one of those things that like we want to build this to where we build it we go to the track we don't have to work on it shit like that and having 19 fittings and like some of the fittings were like welded together and it just had so much shit going on that every little thing they had would be a problem. Like the, the pump was wobbling. It was just, it was one of those things like it worked, but we go down the track one pass and the pump 
shits out, you lose the race or hurt the motor or you know whatever. So we just redo it, do it right. But um, we really need a motor plate, but we don't have one. I tried to take the one off the Bad Apple 2.0, but it's already been cut too narrow. So we're just gonna make this work. Shout out to the belt guard. Saving the day. Yeah, we'll probably have to reconfigure the uh there uh we'll probably be going right here. So move this to here and uh get it. Cause I like to keep everything close to the balancer. Um but it's going. I think we're we're rocking and rolling. Um hopefully we can get the pump up high enough to where we can catch maybe this hole. That'd be sweet. Um and we don't have to take the because the the motor plates cut up pretty high right here so normally like a a race craft one would be about right here so we'd have to cut it for the header but you have all that extra real estate right there to mount the pump so spend your time doing it right because like this, this it takes four times as long to undo it yeah and it's a it's a a key critical component and i see a lot of people that go to the track and like their crank pickup like make sure your crank trigger make sure just make sure it's right everything's good solid mounted like really we're not talking smack no just but just make sure it's right because it'll spin like i've seen a lot of people that like they go to the track and they're like cars running like shit and they can't figure it out and it's their crank trigger wobbling around and they got their mount and like their fuel pump's not mounted right and everything and um oil pump when you start doing it i mean just make sure the thing's nice and beefy and robust and um you know lock tight at lock nuts and everything because I, I have seen a lot of cars that have issues in this because something comes loose or it's wobbling so do it right what do you think another another day of working on this thing we could have fire in the pipe yeah we got um somebody's gonna uh i think dave's gonna go to tkm tomorrow and get the tap Shout to dave dave's been putting in work lately what do you gotta say dave say something to the people always putting in work no no open open the what Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Got some stuff mounted. We've been doing some figuring. We changed fuel pumps because the other fuel pump just was not working out. So we got an air motor black on there, which would be good for way more uh, fuel consumption this motor will be needing. Uh, we need to drill a hole. Hey, John, you got any drill bits? Mother of God. Say, drill a hole. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. <laughs> it's almost a gosh, sorry, I walk like this after getting absolutely shafted. I'm fast and all. It's not because of the damn uh, tools on my damn belt. You need me to measure something? I got you. You need some drill bits? <laughs> they come with no lube, can guarantee that. Also, their zip ties are a ripoff. Don't buy anything from Fastenal ever again. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm loaded up. What you need, my guy? Oh! Come with this, too. Milwaukee. You know, uh, what, what's worse? The uh, the Fastenal trip or the time you got something overnighted? <laughs> that was a really big box. Oh. Um, <laughs> a build in the Colorado. <laughs> 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 yeah. we, we just did the breakdown on my receipt. I'm going to put the receipt on the screen. <laughs> I'll give you guys the exact backstory of Fast and All. We went in there, and there was this guy about yay high. I'm not discriminating or anything. Yay high, bald, with his little mustache. And uh, like right off the bat, he was just like pissed that we were in the store. I'm like, hey, I know you work here, and they pay you. I'd love to spend my money here at just the store that employs you. And he was just mad as hell. Uh, he's like, what do you need? I'm like, I need... This thread, which is M8, we already knew it. And I said, I need it by 3.5 inches, uh, but I know it doesn't come in inches. It comes in millimeters. He's like, you can't do it in inches. I'm like, just said that. Is that, This is, I'm, I'm not, this is, like, this is word for word, like quoted, okay? And uh, so then he pulls out this big plastic, like ruler for millimeters. Mason touches it. He gets pissed that Mason touches it. So I like take a step back. Mason's like, what the hell's going on? We give ourselves the look. Then he takes it and then puts it in the little thing where it says M8. He's like, this is an M8 bolt. I'm like, okay, we're two minutes in here. Everything's already been established. Then we go over. He's like, these only come in packs of 25. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I just need them. He's like, well, which one do you want? I was like, yeah, I'll take like, uh, what was it? It was like uh, 85 and 90 or, yeah. or 75 and 80 millimeters. 
is what it ended up being. And I was like, oh, I'll take them both. He's like, well, they only come in boxes, a 25. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take that one and that one. He's like, you sure you want this? I'm like, listen, bro, I got plenty of damn money. Just give me the bolts. And then after that, he's just like, you sure you got plenty of damn money? So I see these zip ties. I'm like, I'll take these zip ties, these zip ties, these zip ties, sitting right next to the cash register, impulse buy. I'll take those. Hits me with like 650 at checkout. And I'm like, yep. And then as soon as I walk out of there, I'm like, damn it. I did not want to spend $650 in fast and all. And that's exactly what happened. Then we did the breakdown and they were charging me 37 cents per zip tie. And it was a hundred pack of zip ties. So I was paying $40. Yeah, no. <clears throat> So, if we went in there and I said, hey, I need two zip ties, will they open the pack and sell me two no, zip no, ties? No, no, you gotta buy it in the pack. Okay, well then the why are you charging me by the damn zip tie? Yeah, I think we've uh, under uncovered some uh, shady stuff that Fastenal's doing. Well, regardless, that guy right there, if I ever see him in public, I'm gonna damn turtle wax his head for being, for being, being like that. That's all I could say. Anyways, <laughs> the moral of the story is we got a drill bit set. <laughs> That's, that's 2023 start off rough. Dude, January, whoop my ass. February, get assaulted by fast and all. <laughs> if, this, if these things don't drill like a hot knife through butter, I'm taking them back. They got a warranty? No, but I'll throw them through the damn you window. Turn them trash. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he cares. Got a handy dandy M18 drill here. You're welcome. How, how much? I, I mean, I've really stepped it up. Tell the people how much I've stepped it up. Yeah, I mean, I probably got a fuel, but it's whatever. <laughs> I wish you could see John's face right now. I mean, I was just saying the fact that I got parts in stock. We have lights, oh. we have flashlights. Oh, yeah. Describe the first time you came here. Well, turn all the lights off in here. And then shit everywhere. And, and toolboxes flipped over. And instead of toolboxes, you had a cardboard box with just random <laughs> shit in it. And we had to go, like, we would need, like, hey, I need a 3 8 bolt. All right, we'll have to go to Lowe's. Just know just one three-eighths bolt. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to go to Lowe's. And I'm like... This is this is true. Yeah. This is true. And now, we have multiple fuel pumps with collars in stock. Yeah, multiple fuel pumps with collars in stock. Um, let, me, let me tighten that up a little bit. I don't want that thing to be... Little... <laughs> we got all this shit for over here. <laughs> okay. The universal race car wrench. Let me like, knock the damn good off this drill bit real quick. Dude, that is in the wrist breaking position I've ever seen <laughs> with that turbo right there. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. What? Say it. <laughs> they make me feel better. That I, I'm looking right here, but it looks like that took off quite a bit of material in just a couple passes. Damn. Damn. It is aluminum though, let's, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean it is, but still that's not bad. I mean, I have picked up bits here that are smoke <laughs> before they go through the aluminum. It's like you're drilling through like a piece of aluminum quarter inch and it's just like, <laughs> David knows exactly yeah, what he's yeah. talking about. And then, uh, the worst part, there's a box here somewhere. A box. Some of them are good, some of them are They're bad. bent, they're broken half, and it's just like a box. Like somebody's like, yep, I'm a fucking... What are you going to do with that? Uh, okay. I love I love when you get the hole saw that's just so wobbly. Uh, I'll see. Let's see how this works here. No. <laughs> I don't feel like... Dude, that drill bit is putting in work though, my boy. <laughs> Damn, you, you were so close to poking the head. <laughs> Straight through the speed master block. I think that bit would have gone through the thing like butter. Like just wham. Oh, we have a new oil galley. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, so we'll grab my boat. You happy with that drill bit? Yeah. 
Okay. Good job, John. Now, now if you just you say you get right solid now person. Now just learn how to sharpen them. No, just buy new. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look, a puppy. You want to eat Winston? Oh, yeah, you want to eat? Are you hungry? Want to snack? <gasps> oh. <laughs> All right. Hit him with an update. All right. The drill bits work. The drill bits work. We've just been trying, there's a lot of uh, logistics that go into like setting one of these up, obviously. We talk about it all the time, where if you build it where it's easily to easy to work on, stuff's easily accessible, easy to maintenance, it makes your life a whole lot better. So, Matt and I are pretty much over here for probably like, I don't know, maybe a half hour just talking about routing stuff and where to put stuff, this and that, looking at different things. And, we are changing things to make it easier to work on because this car was pretty brutal to work on yeah. before. So More reliable, cleaner, less fittings, less shit. Less failure points, easier yeah. to work on. That's like that's the ultimate goal here. So uh, first off, we are changing where the fuel tank is. We're moving yeah. it from the driver's side, which was encapsulated by the exhaust, which as you can see by the heat tape on it, not ideal. Really not too much worried about fluid though getting hot because the fluid will cool itself. So we're putting it over here out of the way of the exhaust. So we, it, I, I plan to at some point reroute it with titanium exhaust. Uh, everything's going to be on the passenger side. So we're going to have the fuel tank, the oil pump, the oil filter, and the fuel filter all on the passenger side. Keep everything nice and clean. Very short runs of lines. Make sure it's all nice and routed correctly. All of our CO2 lines coming from the intake manifold will follow those lines down over to here and really just try to clean it up as much as we can. Well, before when you looked at it, you had a dry sump tank over here, you had the oil pump over here, you had the fuel pump over here, fuel tank over here, lines Run, yeah. everywhere. You had the fuel filter. Uh, couldn't couldn't the fuel filter was it. in line, could not maintenance it. Oil filter was behind the bumper, could and it's a clear view, so you couldn't see it. Uh, and then there was a big oil line running down here that was absolutely cooked by the wastegate, which was a huge issue yeah so we're just trying to clean it up and make it a whole lot better that's why we went to the external wet sump tank we got rid of the dry sump so it uses the uh oil pan as it's where it stores all its oil capacity yeah i don't really think on a uh on a turbo car i'm not really sure how much more horsepower uh dry sump's really good for because like a uh, nitrous car something you have that really sealed up you do get more crankcase vent or crankcase vac from it but this, I mean, turbo cars, they got some big ass, you're not, you're not pulling any crankcase back with that, with a, you know, two dash sinking lines. So, um, but yeah, no, we got our pump mounted over here, everything. So I like to, like, if something happens with your belt too, like if your oil pump belt comes off and your fuel pump belt doesn't, then your motor keeps running and you don't have no oil pressure. This belt comes off, the motor's dying because it's losing fuel pressure. A little bit of safety thing so we got this um it's going to come out so the oil system is going to come out of the pump right here clear view is going to be mounted right here so it's going to come out of the clear view go in the clear view come out of the clear view go over across the top of the motor down into the inlet fitting of the block if we ever get one in it <laughs> fuel pump feed out of the bottom 90 90 into the bottom of the pump bam done out of the pump it's going to come up to the motor plate right here come up into our system one filter right here out of the system one filter down to the rail crossover regulator down crossover all these lines will be together we're going to try to keep them away from the uh, cylinder head right here because if it yeets out right there we don't want to melt no lines back around through here back over the fuel tank for our turn done lined up super clean nothing's really in the way yep all brown and miller lines gonna look really good it's going to have be very serviceable. The, the, the line itself, you never have to worry about getting hard or whatever, anything like that. Yeah, methanol, run methanol or, through it. Yeah, catch on fire. It's a lot more heat resistant than a lot of them. Mounted the, the fuel filter. And this is just like one of the things that we think about when we do it. Like mounting it vertical, there wasn't enough like room. So I mounted it at a little bit of an angle. And then it'll also kick our line down with 120 degree, uh, a little bit farther where we need to go. But we screwed this 
filter to where it's like basically just a couple threads and well, one of the bolts in it but basically a couple threads before it's in there so when you do that you make sure that you can get the filter on and off without having to take this off on the bracket so we know that if you mount it with it almost to where it comes apart then you know that whenever you mount it you'll be able to get it apart you don't mount it with it all together and then you go to unthread it and you go shit i can't get my fuel filter apart because also we were looking at mounting it right here but if you mount it here it makes tough yep. to gain your spark plug access yeah so, so it's like all this little stuff like you really have to look at it from like a million different angles a bunch of different scenarios yep. and it takes time i mean it really does take time but when you once you mess with a car that is really thought out like that and we we're not like the holy grail of laying out a car or anything we just race a lot so we understand like hey if we got to change spark plugs and it's going to be a pain in the ass to like work around this fuel filter we're not going to put the fuel filter there yeah like you you damn header builders james is good but some of them other guys they'll build some headers that you can't get to the damn plug and they got plenty of room and they just don't think about it and they're like yeah no it's ridiculous so when you're when you're doing it so when i do it i always try to think like when i'm working on the car so i'm like all right, we mount the fuel filter there. Well, what are we going to do when we're working over here, running the valves? Is this in the way? Is that in the way? And if, if you do all that and you really try to think about everything, then you'll have a lot better product at the end that's easy to work on at the track. Because you build them so you don't have to work on them, but you, you don't want to, you know, have some really... I mean, I've seen some cars where it's like... You do Slick Rex is a good example. I mean, it's literally oh, very, all of the data that all, you can possibly have, and it looks clean. Yeah, everything's there. It's easy to work on. We don't have anything that's like... Some of the stuff, you know, spark plug access is not great on that. We didn't do the headers, like... But it's not terrible, and everything else is... It fits good. Like, everything is something to where if you have to work on it, it's not going to be an issue. So that's what we're doing with this, and that's why we're redoing it. Could we have put it back together the way it was? Yes. Would it have been probably an issue yes it would have been a pain to work on pain like and two also when you do them this way like if you have to pull the motor in and out of this thing like you could literally have the motor in and out all the shit mounts good there's no like making yeah, these brackets and the mounted off of the motor plate and stuff like that which isn't necessarily terrible but then like none of the lines were just for the motor they went from the motor plate to a million different things on the chassis so it's like if everything is on the motor plate that goes to the motor yeah, That's it's good. like MK Ultra, the new Bad Apple, I always build them, you know, kind of like, I, I found something that works good, and like, with everything, like when you mount the oil filter and all that, like you can literally pull the motor out in like a, a unit, and yeah. all, the only thing that you have that comes off is the... Like the feed line. The feed line to the turbo and the, the fuel the the line going from the tank to the pump you know just a couple lines same as the same as the black sheep you know it's like the, i mean you could put everything on on the engine stand you set the motor in put the motor plate bolts in hook your lines up and you're done yeah, it's ready to go i mean you could have you could literally if you were like really competitively racing you could have a whole backup motor with everything in there and you just like yeah. switched out so all right, well, well, that wraps up. We're, we worked, I mean, hell, full day uh, of work, and it's 1.18 in the morning right now, so we're going to wrap this up, get this video edited out to you guys. Hopefully the weather's good. Hopefully people start testing around here, and uh, we can make a couple laps. I mean, really just go to the track, make a couple hits, 60-foot hits, and kind of go from there. Both the cars have been down track before, but really, like, when you put them back together, really got to get it ironed out, so. Yeah, just check everything over, make sure we... Oh, we got to get the bump box fixed in this. I ain't got one. Oh, oh, it had the trans brake was weird too. Like, yeah. It it has no solid state relay. It just has a relay for the bump, and it like. So it literally turns the trans brake on and off. Isn't that what it's doing? Yeah, I mean that's what the solid state relay does, but the regular relay can't do it near fast enough. Well, I have some solid state relays. Yeah, we have to wire some stuff in. So, all right, that's gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload.